some people are freaking out about cookies, uh, third party mm -hmm. cookies. And I get this question a lot. Um, you know, what happens when the third party cookie, you know, dies off and it's removed and you know, this is, this is being delayed now until 2024, uh, which is good. Yep. gives us time as publishers and, um, us to work out what's, what, you know, what's going on, what are we going to do? Um, so I would just like to ask you this at the most, like speak to somebody who is just like a content site owner and they're like, I want to put ads on my site and they, you know, they don't know what a third party cookie is. And, and so what is a third party cookie? How does it work? And then what's, what's going to happen when these are removed and how does that relate to publishing and ads? Yep. Yep. So, um, cookies in general are technology in your browser that um, help websites understand who, a little bit about who you are and keep track of you. So to go back to my very early days of the web, before cookies, what a web, you could never log into a website because from e each page was like independent. The, the web had no memory. Like websites didn't know who you were. So the idea, you know, the engineers at that point in time was like, we need some technology that makes it so like sites can remember who you are at a very simple level. Yeah. Um, and the technology that came out of that is called cookies. There are two kinds of cookies at a very high level. One is called first party cookies, which none of all these things that are going on in the world really affect. But a first party cookie is like when you go to dogs.com, um, I have no idea what site we're talking about, but let, let's just use that as an example. Yeah. Um, if you log in directly to that site with code running on that site, like it's a WordPress plugin or something like that, and it's like literally served from that domain, that's a cookie that lives inside that domain. So dogs.com itself is tracking you as a user, and that doesn't work anywhere else. If you go to cats.com, like it doesn't know anything about you. Mm -hmm. um, third party cookies are cookies that are run by companies that are not the owner, not the not not the domain itself. So yeah. to use us as a pretty good example, if we worked with dogs.com and cats.com and adthrive.com code is running on both sites, we can use third party cookies to say, oh, on dogs.com, this is Jared. And also, I mean, we don't know if it's Jared per se, but we know it's your cookie. And we can see that same cookie, that same third party cookie appear on, on cats.com and be like, oh, this is the same user. That's really interesting. They own a dog and a cat, but that's an interesting data point. So that's like, simply conceptually what it is. Technologies existed for 30, close, you know, 94, I think it came out. Okay. Um, so for a long time now. And from the early days of it happening, people realized there were a lot of privacy issues around that. And more and more privacy is becoming a huge deal, generally in the world, but also because of regulations like GDPR in Europe and CCPA in California and Colorado and Vermont and Brazil and other, like more and more you know, states and countries are implementing different privacy rules, forcing people to start saying like, how do we improve user privacy? And third-party cookies are one of like, have a, a lot of weaknesses when it comes to privacy. Um, yeah. Because effectively any company that can run that can run code on a website can track users all over the place. It's like sort of a scary like situation. Yeah. And so all of the browsers have made efforts to clean that up over time. At this point, the only browser left that doesn't turn them off by default is Chrome, um, but Chrome is 50 to 60% of browsers out in the world. So it's, it's a big, big, big deal. And I think so simplistic, and, and then, you know, the, the, the key point is that advertising systems have been built over the last 15 years on cookies as the core technology. And so it's like, oh, go ahead. I just, yeah, I just want to expand that, double click mm -hmm. on it, open it up, whatever you want to call it. But just so people get this, that, the way and and correct me if i'm wrong the way that media buyers and you know ad networks like you guys work out what types of ads to serve to the users is by tracking the users data right so just people yep. just want people want people to understand that um because that's that's big <laughs> yep yep exactly and, so, and, and there are other systems and technologies like context matters like if you're on a page about dogs like Serving dog ads there does make sense actually, so that that certainly happens also. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, that's exactly right. Like cookies and the tracking of users across sites is a big part of it. And and this the very simple example is the type of advertising called retargeting, where you go to Zappos and you put some sneakers in your shopping cart, but you don't buy them. Mm -hmm. And then two days later, you're on Dogs.com and you see a Zappos ad with the exact sneakers that that you you wanted to buy. That's like the most traditional use of it. And there's a million more ways it's used, but that's like the basic case. And that, that uses, that is, you know, tracking at its core and it uses cookies to do that. Cool. Okay. So just the easiest way to, for people to conceptualize it is that 
third party cookies allows almost anybody to any smart person that knows how to code to track data to be able to re re advertise or advertise to them um yep. you know, in, in, with the yeah. So now there's the removal of cookies and it's been delayed to 2024. What does that mean for people that say on your platform and maybe other ad networks where they're like, you know, this ad network uses cookies to be able to get us the best RPM because they're serving the correct users with the right ad. Boom. That's how we get a, a higher RPM. Yep. What, what, what do we do? <laughs> What do we do about that? So, so, so I, you know, I can only speak for us per se. Um, mm -hmm. All I can speak maybe for the ecosystem to some level. What we do know is that lots of companies and industry trade groups and things are building technologies to replace cookies. That's happening. And we're very actively engaged in all of that. And I can talk more about the details in a minute if you want. So all, all these companies are building different technologies. I think also it will be true that whereas today, nearly everything relies on a single technology, which is cookies. I think in the future, you know, the, the phrase that a big advertiser we work with said to me that I like a lot is, is she called it like a patchwork quilt. It's going to be a batch of different solutions that have to be built that, that fill it, fill the gap for cookies. So yeah. it's not like, oh, we're getting rid of cookies and replacing it with cupcakes. Um, yeah. That's not what it's going to be. It's going to be, we're getting, replaced, we're getting rid of cookies and replacing them with these 12 things that yeah. all together sort of do the same things, but do it in a way more privacy yeah, kind of preserving. Like that. Yeah. Within that, I think for, for, specific publishers you know you, you want to work with a good ad network or good ad partners that is on top of that because it is not yeah. a it, it is there's no question that it is the single largest change to the entire digital ad industry ever um and so it's like while i think that we can come out of this all fine i'm sure there are a lot of people who will not come out of this fine because mm. it's complicated and not you know not trivial to get from from our point A of cookies to point B of this future that we don't fully understand yet. 